supported. So um, uh, my name is Mary Malley. I'm the Assistant Director of Academic Success here at the Chinnery Testing Center. And I'm gonna give the floor to our amazing um, graduate um, peer academic consultant, also known as a PAC, Caria. So Caria, go ahead and take it away. Thank you for the lovely introduction, Marriott. So yeah, as she was just saying, I am a peer academic consultant here at NSU. Um, I'll explain a little bit at the end what that entails and how I could help you um, going forward beyond just this presentation. But yeah, so today we'll be um, primarily talking about just self-confidence and self-love and uh, all the ways that we can kind of introduce that into our lives. So um, just at the basis of it, we're gonna be really talking about strategies and activities to increase your self-awareness and self-compassion to really get you going on your journey to self-love and help you build that confidence with a sense of fierceness. So there's a lot of different definitions for self-love. Um, you know, every it's one of those things where everyone has kind of their own definition of it. Um, we have just, we've plugged in a few different ones and, you know, whichever one resonates best with you, or you can make up your own definition of it. But at its core, it's essentially having a regard for your own well-being and happiness in whatever way that looks for you. You know, like I said, there's no kind of one size fits all. Um, we all need different things from ourselves. So it just whatever kind of feeds that and feeds your soul for you um, is your version of self-love. Um, but it essentially boils down to having that appreciation for yourself. Um, and it, you can really kind of grow it by having a, like that level of support for yourself on different facets of your life and different levels like physical, psychological, and spiritual. And we'll get to talk a little bit later about ways you can um, make that easier and a reality for yourself. But my, I guess, first question jumping right into this presentation is, do you ever find yourself being your worst critic? A lot of the times, feel free to um, jump out and say say yes or no, or drop it in the chat. But I'll start off on a personal level and say, absolutely. I think no one else spends 24 hours, seven days a week for a lifetime with you other than yourself. So we watch everything we do all the time. And I think as humans, we just have a way of really downplaying our success and really focusing on the things that we get wrong. And it's really hard, you know, it's it's a habit that we all have. It's it's a really easy trap to fall into. And like I said, by just constantly being with yourself, we can take a lot of the good for granted. Um, I see I see some yeses in the chat. I saw you nodding, Marianne. So I'm seeing that this is resonating. So I'm not happy to hear that, but hopefully through this presentation, we can kind of bring more awareness to how we think of ourselves and hopefully start off that journey of slowly, you know, it'll be a process, but slowly reworking the way we view ourselves and feel about ourselves. Um, so what is self-love? Like I said, there's different definitions and different ways of viewing it, um, but it essentially is the fuel that allows an individual to reach their full potential in whatever way that looks for them. And a lot of it is based in foundations of having compassion for yourself, grace, and being gentle with yourself. Um, it means, you know, prioritizing yourself and giving yourself to per permission to really find and discover what your strengths are and kind of building off on those. It can also involve things like setting boundaries and really figuring out what aligns with you and what doesn't and just really learning how to prioritize things in your life. So like I said, there's a lot of definitions. So we'll go through a couple of different ones and hopefully at least one of them resonates with you, but it can also mean to fully accept yourself, treat yourself with kindness and respect and really nurture that growth and well-being. Um, it also can mean being in love with every part of yourself, you know, really taking care of your needs, not sacrificing your well-being to please others and not settling for less than you deserve. It can also, I think this is a really good quote in terms of, you know, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. Like I mentioned earlier, it is a process. It is something that you have to gradually do a little bit of until you get to a point where you feel happy, um, you know, in your body, in yourself, um, and really kind of learn that skill of really listening to what your body needs, what your brain needs, and learning the ways that you can feed it. 
And it also doesn't mean that you have to ignore your flaws or act like you're perfect. You know, that's not really what self-love is. Self-love at its core is having that acceptance of, no, I'm not perfect. No one is. There's not a single person in the world who is, even Taylor Swift and Beyonce, they're not perfect. So, um, you know, if they're not, like, we don't have to hold ourselves to this ridiculous standard. But it's a matter of accepting that those, quote unquote, flaws, which, first of all, who determines them to be flaws? You know, they're just... You, I, I consider them to be, you know, things that make me myself. Um, but it's a matter of accepting them and just refusing to use those things as reasons to dislike yourself. You know, as it's almost an act of rebellion. So there's, you know, there's a lot of different foundations to self love. There's different facets. There's different ways you can approach it. It could be a matter of a mental health thing by focusing on things like stress management and really taking care of your mental health, developing coping skills. It could be a matter of self-acceptance, like I just mentioned earlier, and that acknowledging, no, I'm not perfect. Perfection is something that no human ever reaches, and that's okay, and just learning to accept that and really appreciate those things that make you uniquely you. Um, like I mentioned earlier, it could also just be a matter of setting boundaries and really kind of taking care of your needs by accepting what you need and let it go, letting go or putting barriers between you and things that aren't making your life um, as rich as you would like it to be. It could also be self-care. So self, self-love self and self-care are often kind of used interchangeably and they definitely go hand in hand in terms of like doing things that make you happy, finding the time for yourself to take care of your needs um, really feeds into self-love as a concept. Um, it could be tackling your inner voice you know we all have that little mean voice in our head sometimes sometimes it's louder than other times but really kind of working towards changing how it you know how it is and um learning to gradually change the things that it tells you because we do have more control than we acknowledge um and it's just a matter of practicing until you get there um, and it could also be a matter of self-discovery. You know, we're all college students. Um, we're figuring out, we're at a very like pivotal point of our life where we're kind of figuring out where we're headed. You know, we just, we were just kids like 10 minutes ago and now we're full-fledged adults apparently. And we have to kind of determine where we're headed with our life, what our passions are and how do we work towards it. So part of that, you know, is daunting, but part of it is also exciting. I know you're getting to, learn about who you are. You might be living on your own for the first time. Um, you're meeting all sorts of different people, maybe joining different clubs, developing new interests, um, finding subjects that really speak to you, figuring out like, oh, this is a career path I can see myself doing. So self-discovery is also a huge part of self-love and it's as daunting as it is, it's also very exciting and rewarding. Um, this is just briefly to show that there are different kind of levels and facets of self-love. It could be things like self-expression, self-esteem, self-pleasure, self-compassion, self-care, self-awareness and honesty, self-trust, self-respect, and self-acceptance. So all of these fall within the self-love tree. They're all branches on it and they all serve different functions, but essentially um, it all leads you to um, self-love. So let's talk about some benefits of, oops, let's talk about some benefits of self-love. So these are all things that I found that are like research-based, which is really cool. Um, but there has been research that found it to increase motivation and willpower. So, you know, by having that foundation of self-love, it really can kind of push you in directions that maybe you didn't feel like you could um, go there before, you know? Um, it also brings you greater perspective and therefore helps with decision-making you know, by kind of clearing up a lot of those maybe negative thoughts or beliefs about yourself, it can grant you with that level of insight and perspective to really help clear up the path ahead of you and make you, like I said, make you achieve things that maybe you didn't even consider giving your ch yourself a chance to even try before. Um, it definitely also makes you more resilient, um, especially when conflict unfortunately inevitably arises in our lives. Um, it makes it more easy to bounce back in the face of failure. And instead of letting it kind of affect who you are at your core, you can just see it as, you know, a mistake that happened, something to learn from, and you can move on from it and take the good and leave the bad behind. Um, it also makes you more emotionally intelligent. 
And, you know, by doing that, it improves your relationships um, and how you interact with others. Um, it brings you richer relationships in your life and the quality of them increases. Um, it also lowers lowers your stress levels and decreases feeling of overwhelm, which I don't know about you, but we could really use that in college, especially. So that's another nice uh, feature that I think we can all benefit from. It also um, just generally boosts your psychological well-being and decreases things like anxiety and depression. There's been a lot of research done on that specifically with self-love and self-esteem and how they are really tied to anxiety and depression. So, you know, they're negatively correlated. So the more self-love you bring into your life, the more you act on it, the, the lower your levels of anxiety and depression are, which again, pretty cool feature. Um, and it also has been shown to improve your health by improving your immune system. Um, our stress levels are also tied to our immune system. So by improving your stress, you're also improving your health. Um, but also it also increases um, your habits of taking care of yourself. So that's another way it can improve your health. Let's talk about some cool stats because I like stats. Um, so cool self-love stats. So 44% um, of people believe self-love is an important aspect of mental health, which makes sense because we just saw that it is. Um, specifically, women say that practicing self-love, like uh, they say that claim that they practice self-love regularly compared to just 5% of men. Um, and 89% of people believe that self-compassion is an important aspect of self-love. So those are definitely very connected, like I mentioned earlier. Um, one in three people globally struggle with self-acceptance and self-value. 60.2% 60, 60 of American women report having negative thoughts about themselves daily, which is really sad. Um, again, I'm sure a lot of us can relate to this, especially as women. I feel like there's a lot of um, societal reasons why we feel about ourselves the way we do. You know, we're kind of beyond the generation of like magazines really being a thing, but now we have social media, which is even <laughs> even worse than magazines used to be in the early 2000s somehow. So there's a lot of different things that are out there that cause us to feel that way. So while it seems like more women typically practice in self-love than men do, women still report having more negative thoughts about themselves on a daily basis. 64% um, of people believe that self-love has a positive impact on their overall lives, which as we saw in the benefits before, that seems to really be the case. 48% um, of, of millennials think social media negatively impacts self-love. So there's definitely, like I mentioned, that connection between social media, the things that we see on a daily basis and how it affects our self-view. 78% um, of people think that their self-love is not as good as others. So even when it comes to self-love, people are still comparing how well their self-love is to other people's self-love. So it's a vicious cycle of just comparison. Um, and 68% of women practice self-care at least once a week as a means of self-love. So self-care, self-compassion, we're seeing that both our people associate them with self-love. And um, more than 80% of participants in a study claimed that self-love and confidence improve with age. So that's good for us that are, you know, we're still in our, you know, some of us are still in our late teens, early twenties, mid twenties. So hopefully there is hope for us yet with wisdom, you know, you'll learn to accept yourself more, but we can start now, you know, we don't have to wait until we're older and over 70% of people believe self-love significantly impacts their career and job satisfaction. And I would imagine that also applies to academic performance. So, you know, just to make it apply to us if it affects performance in general. Um, yeah. So what is self-love not? It's not perfection. You know, we've, I've talked about that a lot already. I'm gonna keep drilling it in. Perfection is unobtainable. We're never going to try to obtain it. We're just going to try to improve ourselves, comparing ourselves to only ourselves, because that's really the only person you can realistically compare yourself to. Self-love is also not striving for happiness. Happiness is another unobtainable goal. Um, it sells a lot of self-help books, but unfortunately, it's one of those things where, first of all, happiness looks different for everyone. And what is happiness? It's not sustainable. There's different ways of looking at it, like finding meaning, being content. So so self-love and happiness do not necessarily equate to one another. Um, self-love is also not really focusing so much on your achievements and having that connection of the more I achieve, the more I deserve love. You know, you never want to have that connection that's contingent on that. Similarly, you don't want to kind of attach your self-love to external measurements of success and only deem yourself to be worthy of it when you 
have success in your life because life is going to be ups and downs and you deserve self-love no matter what you're doing, where you're at with it. And shame-based criticism is also, we don't want that in self-love, you know, that will do the opposite of what it's trying to achieve. And like I mentioned earlier, comparing yourself to others, there's just, there's no point in doing that because you're an entirely different individual with an entirely different history, different genetics, different everything. So the only, again, the only person you can realistically compare yourself to is past you. So that's the only way you can really measure growth. So yeah, these are just some more examples of what self-care is or self-love is not. So just some other uh, examples of it is um, kind of outlined here. So now that we've kind of talked about, you know, what self-love is, what it means to people, the different benefits of it, um, how do you start your self-love journey, journey? Just to keep it simple, a lot of it starts off with having an open mind and being willing to be vulnerable and honest with yourself. Um, it also really hinges on putting yourself first. I think, especially again, as women, I feel like we're socialized into believing that taking care of ourselves is it can be selfish, you know, even at a young age where, you know, a lot of, I don't know how many older sisters are here, but even older sisters are kind of like taught to take care of their other siblings. And we're kind of like conditioned into always putting others' needs above ours, which kind of unintentionally makes us feel like when we do take care of ourselves, it can be like, it could feel like a little bit wrong, um, but that's definitely not the case. So making your time for yourself is crucial to really kind of starting out this journey. And again, like I mentioned, you know, self-care and self-love, it's different for everyone. There's no size fits all. So this is just an example of what a typical journey could look like, but it could look very different for you. Like I said, you know, some for some people, self-love starts off with just setting boundaries. Like that, that can be a lot of people's first step before they even start introducing um, anything else. But this is an example of what a process could look like. Um, you could start off by, you know, little steps of, stopping comparing yourself to others and practicing gratitude for the things that you do have that you do possess um and then it can, it can kind of take you towards letting yourself feel all the feelings like i said even the bad ones you know they all make us who we are so the good and the bad it all at the end of the day equates to who we are so there's no point in dismissing the bad or quote unquote bad as deemed by society largely um, also having that understanding that mistakes are a part of learning. Mistakes do not define you. They do not make you who you are. If you got a bad test grade, that doesn't mean that you're not smart or this is who you are now. It just means that maybe like there was something that didn't go right. Maybe you didn't get enough sleep. Maybe you just didn't study as hard as you wanted to learn from it, do something different, keep working towards it, but just take it as what it is and don't let it define you and who you are. Also really important, really crucial is to surround yourself with people who help you grow, people that don't stifle your growth, people that encourage you to go after the things that make you happy or the things that you're passionate about. Um, that is a crucial aspect of self-love. And lastly, forgive yourself and let go of toxic shame, um, which ties into kind of the mistakes part of just forgiving yourself for any shortcomings that you might encounter, which you will, we'll all, we all have a lifetime worth, worth of mistakes to do and that's okay. We're humans. Um, but just learning to forgive yourself is really what is going to help you navigate it more easily. Okay. So when it comes to building confidence, as we talked about, confidence is really tied to self-love. Um, you know, something that can help you start developing that is to set goals for yourself. So setting some realistic goals, we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit from now. Um, but as I mentioned, surrounding yourself with positive people also really helps with confidence. If you're around people that you know bring you down or give you backhanded compliments all the time, it's not hard to internalize those things to be true. Um, so really letting go of people like that and trying to surround yourself with people that believe in you, that see you for who, for who you really are, that aren't projecting their own insecurities onto you that can really help um, help you grow and develop. Also taking care of your body, you know? Um, I think there's like this issue of like a lot of people, including myself, you know, sometimes like I kind of want to take care of my body to look a certain way, but a lot of it should be, and again, I try to tell myself this all the time, it should be about wanting to 
feel better and wanting to be healthier and kind of by fra framing it that way and shifting your mindset from an aesthetic goal to a more health goal, you'll still achieve the same outcome, but it'll just be much more tangible and much more um, beneficial, even mental health wise to see it that way. Also practicing positive self-talk. Like I said, we all have that mean little voice in our head that like just piles on the shame when we make a mistake sometimes. I don't know about you, but mine is particularly mean sometimes. So um, really kind of working towards, again, our brain, we have control over it. You know, sometimes we act like we don't, but we do. So working towards building that muscle of positive self-talk instead of the mean little voice that just the gremlin little voice that tells you that you're a failure. We don't want to listen to it anymore. And also finding things that you're passionate about, you know, a, a good way of feeling confident is a lot of people feel the most confident when they're doing things that they're good at or things that they enjoy or things that surrounds them with people they like. So just doing more of those things that you're passionate about, that gets you excited, that you're not even having to think while doing, that really helps build confidence as well. Um, these are just some more examples of how to cultivate a healthy self-esteem. Um, this is a hard one. I, I don't know about you, but for me, um, learning how to take and accept a compliment, you know, a lot of us probably just kind of deny it or do the stop you know but you know if someone gives you a compliment there they mean it you know there's rarely an occasion where someone's just saying that to you for no reason so just learn to accept it the same way that if you were to compliment people you would want them to take your word for it just try to kind of see it that way of like oh like if someone is complimenting me they mean it it should help me kind of quiet that little voice in my head um, also a gratitude journal can be really helpful. Um, just kind of starting off your day or ending it, or just in the middle of it, just scribbling down things that you're grateful for every day. There's been a ton of research that shows how beneficial that really is for our mental health and for, um, making us really not take for granted the things that we do have going for us and in our lives. Um, this is a really good one. Think of yourself as a friend. So, we all, again, we all do this. Drop a yes in the chat if you also do this. But we have two sets of rules between how we talk to ourselves and how we talk to our friends. Like our friend can be in the exact same situation as us, but we're like their biggest cheerleader. We're telling them all the things that they need to hear. We're, we're boosting their self-esteem. We're hyping them up. But then when it comes to us, we're just like our worst critic. So a good way. <laughs> I see, I see, I see the chat. I, yep, yep. So we all do it. And it's easier said than done, but just try to kind of think of yourself as like, okay, if I was my best friend right now, how would I talk to myself about this? You know, how, how would I get myself out of the situation? What things would I tell her? And just try to extrapolate that onto yourself. It could also help to talk to your friend while you develop this skill, but just try to do that mind exercise. It could be really helpful. And these are just some little more examples of um, how to fall in love with yourself. So Again, just cutting out the negative self-talk is huge. Cutting out people that are quote unquote toxic or that just don't um, boost you in the way that you deserve to be boosted. Um, and yeah, just pep talks, doing things that make you happy, forgiveness, all things that we really touched on. Um, just the more I drill it, the more I feel like we're it's gonna stick with us, hopefully. Um, it's hard, I know it's hard. Um, another way of, um, you know, developing this kind of habit is affirmations. You know, a lot of people believe in affirmations. People say them in, into mirrors. People put them on like sticky notes on their laptops. Um, I don't know about you, but like every time on, I'm on campus, if I see, see like a cute little sticky note in the bathroom that has like a cute quote on it, it like genuinely does make me happier. So doing things like that for yourself or for others can really, it, it's it seems small and insignificant, but it could actually really go a long way with a lot of people. So, you know, these are examples of self affirmations that you can say or write up somewhere for you to see, I'm my own best friend. It is natural for me to love myself. I'm grateful to be the person that I am. I love each part of myself, you know, things like that. I love who I am and relax and calm. I use that one a lot. Um, I appreciate all the ways that I'm unique. Um, just the more you say it, the more it's gonna get drilled in. I promise you it's a muscle that we need to exercise. Um, oops. So these are just examples of there's a lot of really cool stuff online when it comes to challenges that can help you get started. You know, it could be overwhelming to figure out where, like, where do I even start? Um, 
these can help you, you know, you don't have to do the 28 day challenge. Like that might be a lot right now, but you can at least get ideas of like, Ooh, like that's something I can do. You know, it could be something small, like just put on your favorite outfit today or, you know, like spend an hour out in the sun or just pamper yourself with dessert. That's a good one. Um, unfollow accounts on social media that you've just noticed every time you see them, it makes you unhappy. So these are all tangible things that you could do right now as we're talking um, that could make a difference for you in the long run. Um, so these can really give you some ideas of just little things that you can do. I promise you these little things really like add up um, the more you do them. Here's another one. So it could be things like, you know, um, doing a random act of kindness. You know, if you see someone who's upset and just getting them like a, a coffee drink and just that's your good deed for the day. That can make you feel better about yourself. I would want to be that person's friend. So, you know, um, or just taking the scenic route on campus on your way to class if you have like an extra 10 minutes to spare. Just little things like that, again, really go a long way. And visiting a childhood hobby. That one's been my thing lately. I've been really into coloring, like coloring books. It's 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 so great. Like it just makes you like shut your brain down in a way. And it makes you like go back to those days of like, that's all that you cared about is just not coloring outside the lines. And for those 20, 30 minutes, you could just forget about all your problems. So just doing little things like that. Again, these things online can really help you get started. Um, and you don't have to do like 20 things at a time. Just do one little thing here, one little thing there, and it could add up. Oh, so this is a really fun exercise. So if you have, I mean, I assume you all have smartphones. Um, if you were to scan this barcode, uh, this is another activity that was suggested on a lot of them, but you can actually write a letter. Ooh, if, it's, if it lets me show you. Nope, okay. Hang on, let me get rid of my background. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So this, it lets you write a letter to your future self where you can just write out a message, you can put in your email, and then you can put in a date that it would send it to, send it, send it to you by. And it could just be like a really nice way of just having this like cute little reminder, like when you least expect it, you could be having like not the greatest day. And then you get this like cute little encouraging letter from yourself. I don't know. I just, I find that like very adorable and like it could be like a really nice thing that you do for yourself today on a day that you might really need it. And it could just remind you, like, you know, you can say something to yourself that you might find a hard, you might have a hard time believing about yourself or just reminders or whatever it is. And yeah, it'd be nice to just one day you wake up, you look at your inbox and there's this like cute little email from yourself that you typically would say to your friends. Yeah. Awesome. So I have a question for you all. So, you know, now that we've talked a little bit about, you know, self-love and starting that kind of self-affirmations, positive self-talk, I do want to hear from you all or, you know, whether you want to unmute yourself and talk out loud or drop it in the chat, but what is something that you are proud of yourself for? Um, it could be, again, it could be as little as like, I brushed my hair today. I've been putting that off or... I got a, t a test grade that I really wanted, or I just, you know, I did a presentation and I didn't stutter too much. That's mine. So um, yeah, I got, like I said, drop it in the chat or unmute yourself, but I definitely want to hear at least one thing you're proud of today. Well, for myself, I'm definitely proud of um, like finally filling out all my classes for study abroad. It was very like a long process. Yeah. but I finally got it done today and it was like a weight off my shoulder. So I was like super proud that I did that. That's awesome. Congratulations. Where are you going? To uh, University of Westminster in London. That's so exciting. That's exciting. No, but it was that? like, it was, it was so stressful when I was like totally stressing myself out. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me just do it. Yeah. And not have to like, just don't think about the stress, do it in increments. And that yeah. was definitely like, a life changer good breaking it down into small chunks and now you have this like wonderful thing to look forward to and it's all you're doing that's amazing uh yes uh julia hi guys hi I'm myself for. hey i was always like it's similar i was always like putting off my resume and my cover letter i was like i don't ever want to do it and then like one day i just like did it by mistake i was like oh i i'm done and i have both of them and then I've been just like submitting 
applications to everything because I just have them now. It's so easy. Yeah. And also, I'm proud that I'm a really good dog mom. I don't know where she is. <laughs> where that girl is. But I was really scared because she's 14 now. Mm -hmm. And she started needing like subcutaneous fluids, which is like a needle in a bag. Mm. And I was like, I can't do that by myself. Like the vet was like, well, you can and you will come here. And then he made me do it, but it was fine. Like she didn't even, she didn't even care. Yeah, that's that amazing. Awesome. Well, two two major accomplishments and two major things to be proud of. Resumes are definitely not fun to put together, but once you do it, you just put it out there. You can feel confident about like who you are and what you're presenting and applying to those opportunities. And yeah, being a dog mom is definitely something to be proud of. It seems like you really kind of picked up on what they taught you and you've been taking care of your little little fur baby. So that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, we have to see, we have to see it. <laughs> there she is. Oh, she was born Aww. when I was six. She was born when I was six and now she's at college. Oh, well, she looks very well taken care of. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Julia. Ooh, so we got some stuff in the chat too that I want to make sure to read out. So we have um, Vanessa saying getting through school this far, absolutely an accomplishment. It is not easy to get through school. It's one day at a time, but we're here. Kazia is saying that she is proud of her grades and how hard that she works. That's awesome. Um, I don't want to butcher your name. Dalianis, Dalianis. That's a beautiful name. I hope I got it right. But passing my classes so far, uh, Hillary says that uh, they're proud of completing her assignments. Erin, I'm proud about passing my midterms. I was stressing so hard, but did well on them. Amazing, guys. Um, Arishi, I'm proud of myself for becoming more religious, spiritual these past few months. Absolutely. That's something I actually will mention in later on, but that's definitely um, a great goal to have of just kind of feeling more spiritual and connected. Dion, I'm a real estate agent and currently under contact for my first deal. Congratulations. We have some amazing people on here. Great job. Um, Aquisha, I'm proud of staying on top of my schedule and task list. I'm proud for taking care of my health by eating three meals a day. That is that is something to be very proud of. Um, I'm th That's something I'm working on. So very, very, very great. Um, great job, everyone. We're accomplishing a lot of things here and we have a lot to be proud of. And this is just like one thing that you, you've all listed. I'm sure there are many on that list for each and every one of you. So great job. And yeah, just more highlighting of those things um, on a daily basis for you and for your friends. And um, so something else that is kind of tied into that self-love umbrella is self-advocating for yourself, especially as, you know, as women, as we um, you know, get through school or even especially afterwards um, as we go through careers like real, like real estate, like STEM, a lot of STEM careers, it's really important to kind of develop those skills of advocating for yourself and speaking up for yourself and not taking no for an answer um, for when it comes to your achievements and accomplishments. So really learning how to speak up for yourself, staying informed, you know, um, really knowing you know, like taking the matter into your own hands, kind of like Julia said, kind of like Ivana said of like, you know, we we didn't think we would know how to do this, but we just took it one step at a time and we could do it ourselves. So knowing more of those things, knowing your rights is a major one, um, finding the right support. So friends, coworkers, classmates, whatever that entails, um, learning how to problem solve um, can be a really beneficial lifelong skill that you have having the self-determination and also, like I said, self, self-confidence self to be like, you know, I love what Julia said about like, I've just been applying for everything. And I'm like, yeah, like why, why limit yourself, you know? So just go after the things that you, you think you might get, or, and even the things that you think you might not, you'll, you'll be surprised that we're really bad judgments of our own kind of capabilities sometimes. So just go for it. And also learning to ask for help is also a major helpful component to include in self-advocacy. Okay, so forming your own identity and goals, more specifically goals. Um, so life goals, you know, as I mentioned, is also a part of that self-love journey and self building your self-confidence is having these goals and really working towards them. Um, these are things that typically you would be setting for yourself. Um, they align with who you are and who you want to be. 
Um, these can be short-term goals, like, you know, like, um, you know, for me, I, kind of inspired by one of you eating three meals a day, that's a short-term goal, or like something I can easily do soon rather than like, I have to wait years on it. But it can also be uh, long-term goals, such as like eventually buying a house or starting a business, you know, things like that, that we have a few years to work towards. Um, it can be personal goals, such as, you know, like I said, for mine, like um, it would be developing better e eating habits, um, consuming less caffeine, Marianne. Um, <laughs> it would be um, things like developing or learning a new language, um, kind of having certain people in your life. Um, it can also be spiritual, like one of you just mentioned, um, kind of having a, that spiritual growth or financial um, literacy. That's something I think especially as women, um, as we continue to um, kind of grow in our fields and expand and, you know, we're kind of creating our own path in life, you know, we're one of the first generations to really kind of continue to take the, raise the bar higher and higher. Financial literacy is something that's really important to learn um, for yourself and really use it as a powerful tool that you have. Um, but yeah, so setting these goals really, really help you stay focused um, and motivated to achieve them. Why is it important? Like I mentioned, you know, as a, as women, it's even more crucial to develop these goals. Um, it'll help us stay focused on motivated and give us that sense of direction and purpose. Um, and these are just, you know, some examples for those of us that are uh, mothers, you know, if you're a working mom, it can be a, a goal in itself just to like figure out ways to set that time for yourself um, to stay balanced, to take care of yourself. Um, and like I mentioned, if you're in a male dominated industry, such as like STEM, you know, it might be good to, um, develop the goal to eventually work towards becoming a leader in your own field, you know? So that could be things that just really motivate you to keep working towards something. Um, these are just some brief examples of like life goals. Like I mentioned, they could be like small things. They could be big things. Um, it could be like learning new skills, improving your health, um, getting out of your comfort zone, whatever that looks like for you. Um, it could be broad and big, like finding purpose in life or, you know, just small and tangible, like starting out to learn a new language. Um, so these are kind of just, they all fall under the facet of life goals. It could be small achievable things or lifelong things that you work towards. So this is one more quote about self-love. So when you love yourself, you glow from the inside. You attract people who love, respect, and appreciate your energy. It can definitely be a very contagious thing. Um, everything starts with, with and how you feel about yourself. Start feeling worthy, valuable, and deserving of receiving the best life to, has to offer. Be magnetic. So we attract what we put out, you know the way you love yourself teaches others how they should love you. So it can really start with you and that can set the foundation and set the bar of how you deserve to be loved. So make sure to really put that in and work towards that for yourself. Um, these are two mantras that I think we should kind of leave with us today. Um, one is talk to yourself like you would to someone you love. Like I mentioned earlier, huge exercise. We all I saw a lot of yeses in that chat of we all are way nicer to our friends than we are to ourselves. There's no reason for that. We can be just as nice to ourselves. We clearly can do it. So why not just do it to ourselves as well? Also, self-confidence is a superpower. Once you start to believe in yourself, magic starts happening. So we are running out of time, but I did want to just kind of tell you about there's a lot of really great um, love guided meditations on YouTube that really help you tap into those affirmations, like I mentioned, um, really help you kind of slow things down, help you tap into the gratitude that you wanna feel for yourself, be grateful for how your body is functioning, how your heart is pumping, things like that. So that could also be a really good first step if you don't know where to start. Your inter The internet is your worst enemy, but also your best friend. So there's really good things out there um, when you look up the right thing. So um, for everything that it could do against your self-love, there's also a lot of ways it can help feed it or get you started on the right path. So this is just one example. Um, that's the video's title right here. I love it. I listen to it often. It just really helps me um, let go of a lot of negative feelings or thoughts I might be having about myself. It's only five minutes, so it barely takes time out of your day. And you don't need anything other than somewhere to sit and to close your eyes. And she has a really cute dog that walks around in the background. So that could be also motivation. Um, but yeah, so, oh, I wanted to um, 
shamelessly plug myself. Um, so like Marianne said earlier, I am uh, a PAC member, part of uh, the tutoring and testing center. So I, um, we do have an Instagram that we are you know, constantly posting things on as it pertains to tutors, also peer academic consultants. So that's definitely the first place you should be looking to find more information on what we're offering. But starting from this Thursday, I also am going to start a series where I walk us through kind of achievable ways to introduce more self-care into our lives, um, starting with, you know, just the basic things that we need to be doing that are hard to remember. So yeah, feel free to follow us and keep up with that. Like I said, it'll start this Thursday and we'll be on Thursdays going forward. Uh, I look forward to seeing you there. Um, and yeah, so any thoughts, questions or comments about anything that we touched on? Did you learn something new or have you been doing something new that you would like to share with us that you feel like is really helping you with your own personal self-love journey? Feel free to drop it in the chat or unmute yourselves. I think volunteering is fun because it gets me out of my head and like I stop thinking about myself so much. Mm -hmm. Just forget. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah I could have explained better, but I was just like, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, volunteering. And I, I agree. Like for me, I'm the same way, like doing things for other people. I could, again, it could really make me kind of it makes me feel better about myself. It makes me feel like, okay, like, you know, I have purpose. I have things that I'm doing, I'm offering to other people. So it really helps with that, like self-love and feeling like I'm worthy of it. So, you know, just doing things for others, you know, it helps them, it helps you. It's just, you know, give and take um, win-win situation. So absolutely, I love that answer. Um, any other, you know, little things, big things that you're all doing lately? Oh, I see something in the chat. Working out makes me feel like I'm doing something for myself. Absolutely. Um, that's that's something I'm going to mention in my series. It's very crucial to our well-being and mental health. Reading books, absolutely. Yeah, just kind of it kind of falls under that that aren't towards schoolwork. Yes. So more more self-care based in that you're doing something that you actually enjoy and not that something, not something you have to do. Um, I love that. Yeah. Any other Last thoughts or comments? Ooh, I see more. Having my nails done, I feel you. <laughs> Doing skincare, absolutely. Just like an at-home spa day. Same, working out and just keeping my body moving has really been beneficial. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, awesome. It seems like we all have dancing. I like that. There's, I, I think there's like a lot of really cool... Um, dancing um, groups and uh, organizations in this program. So definitely look into those if you are into dancing. I've heard really good things. Um, that's also movement and just, again, doing something for you um, that you enjoy. After I get through the week, I make sure I treat myself to a sweet treat. This week was donuts. I can't go wrong with donuts. They're the best, absolutely. Rewards are a really nice way of kind of thanking yourself for all the things that you put yourself through. You deserve it. I've been looking for dancing classes on campus. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think I yeah, definitely look into those. There's there's I think there's some cool like there's like I know there's Zumba classes. I don't know that's not necessarily dancing, but I know there's some Zumba classes in the gym um, on campus at Don Taft. So I've been wanting to look into that. So maybe that could be a good starting place. Awesome. All right. Well, if there aren't any more, um, it has been such a pleasure talking with you all today. Um, I, like I said, you know, just from the little glimpses that you all shared with us, there's a lot for you to all be proud of. There's a lot for all of you to feel accomplished by. And there's a lot of things that you all do that, you know, are kind of conducive to what I was just talking about uh, in terms of taking care of yourselves and looking out for yourselves and doing things that make you happy. Um, ooh, we're, we have some more information in the chat about Shark Hub online shows, clubs and organizations have dance involved. Thank you, Marianne. So definitely look into that. 
Um, thank you so much. It's very nice and lots of information. Of course, of course. Thank you so much for attending. And yeah, feel free again to follow us on Instagram or, you know, just another shameless plug if you need any help with academics or kind of time management, organization, motivation, things like that, feel free to schedule an appointment with a peer academic consultant. We're located at the Acad Academic Affairs Building, second floor, or you can do it by going onto Sharklink through Navigate and looking for PACs. So we're here to help you and support you. And self-care is definitely something that we really help with, especially me. So feel free to look out for that. Um, but yeah, nice meeting you all. And I wish you all a beautiful rest of the week. And bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Well. Bye, Julia. Thank you for your participation. Thank you, guys.